We're not going to read all of this, but I'll read a few verses so you can get a picture of uh, what we're talking about today. Now, while you're turning there, I want to tell you we're talking about the man in the Godhead bodily. That's where we're going. I had planned this week to show you where Paul, in Colossians chapter 3, identified all of the things that we have been teaching and preaching about the names of Jesus Christ. You can go in there and read it for yourself. He identified everything that we have been telling you about the names of Jesus Christ. Then Paul went in, in the book of Hebrews, and told us that that Man, that name, had brought about salvation. Everything we've been teaching you on the names and salvation, Paul has identified. Then Paul goes on to talk about how that man, those names, coming into the benefits of salvation through him, has brought about the concept of faith. He's the author and finisher of our faith. So, while looking into that message, which I had prepared for today, the Holy Spirit led me to another message, another passage of Scripture, that identifies something that I had never seen, and probably you haven't seen either. This passage has been preached extensively particularly by faith preachers, uh, with a different tone than what I'm going to give you today. But when we unpack it, I think you will see something that will bless you concerning what the divine Godhead does for those that get into position to live, understand, and enter into His presence in the Godhead. Stand with me in reason, in, in honor of the reading of God's Word. Now look what the Bible says. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years. Now I could stop right there and preach for the rest of my time. But I won't. And had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better but grew worse. I could stop right there and preach a long while. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes. Now look at how she ends this. I shall be whole. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word. I pray, God, that you will open our eyes, that we can see our ears, that we can hear in our heart, that we can understand what the word of God is saying to us. Then that we may apply it to our lives so that we can be changed into the image of your dear son. Now, Jesus, we ask you through the Holy Spirit to reveal, to speak. We ask the mind of Christ. To minister, we surrender to the mind of Christ. As we surrender to the mind of Christ, the Holy Spirit speaks on His behalf, on your behalf. As He speaks, He reveals truth. As truth is revealed, we receive that truth. And then we release that truth into the earth. Father, we thank You for all of that. We give you glory and honor in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, our high priest, our Lord, and our man in the Godhead. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. And straightway, the Bible said, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of a plague, of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Now, the woman had something that had plagued her for over 12 years. This plague had isolated her. 
This plague had put her in a position where she could neither be around family, friends, husband, children. By the law, she couldn't be anywhere near anybody because she had a continuous bleed. She was termed as being unclean. Many people feel like that today. They're, they term, they're termed in their own mind as being unclean. They're unstable. They do things they don't want to do. They say things they know they shouldn't. They act in ways they wish they didn't. And so in their mind, they fall into this same category of this woman. They've isolated themselves. They've isolated themselves by behavior. They've isolated themselves through many, many different ways, but they have pushed away everything and everybody. Well, here was this little woman who the law said, the law said, you're unclean. You can't be around it, but the same little woman whom the law said went to the doctor to try to get better. The Bible said they took all of her money. They took all of the things that she had to offer, but look what the Word said. She was nothing better, but grew worse. Now, that meant that what was isolating her became so big in her mind that she was even more isolated because she, watch it now, saw no hope. She saw nothing that would give her any kind of hope that there would ever be peace, that she could ever hug her husband, hold her children, be in a room for cook, clean, any of that. No hope, nothing left, nothing for me to do, nowhere for me to go. If the doctor can't fix me, if the medication can't fix me, I have no hope. She was nothing better but growing worse. Now, where was she growing worse? The blood had flowed for 12 years, so she was growing worse right here. She was growing worse in her mind. She saw absolutely no way out because those that could have given her a way out had failed to do so. They took what they had, but they didn't give her any hope. So here along... She heard about Jesus. Oh, I would that people would hear about Jesus today, don't you? Because you're looking at a man that simply heard about Jesus, was delivered from alcoholism, was delivered from cigarettes, was delivered from a life of sin, was given a new lease on life. My testimony is a, is a kind of a strange one. But at the same time, the reason I have become what I have become, whatever it is I have become, is simply because I heard about Jesus. I heard about Him. I heard about His love. I heard about His care. I heard about His ability to heal. I heard about His ability to deliver. I heard about His ability to make me safe in the spirit world. I heard about his ability to become Lord over everything that has a name. And I simply bowed my knee. And when I bowed my knee, he, in his righteous love, reached down to me. You've heard the song. When he reached down his hand for me. Well, when he reached way down for me, I was lost. Think about that. And undone without God or his son. When he reached down his hand, for me. Well, that's where I was. That's where you were. That's where some of you are. Lost and undone. But I heard that there was a man named Jesus who had gone to Calvary and taken my sin. 
I'll never forget the first time that I encountered him. I was in a revival. I had on French cuffs, and the man began to preach about this Savior, Jesus Christ, who would forgive me my sins. The conviction of God came all over me as the Holy Spirit began to convince me that He was my answer. And I looked down, and I was covered with sweat. I'd sweated through my French cuffs, and I knew that the Spirit of God was giving me Mike Springston, whom no one knew, sitting on the back pew, the opportunity to encounter the man that he was hearing about. I went up and bowed myself upon the altar, and many of them came and prayed. And there was a new guy that rose up. I didn't understand it. I didn't know it. I didn't know what to do about it. No one was there to tell me. All I knew was that something had changed on the inside. Now, what I did with that change was go on with life as usual. What happened to that change? It aborted. What happened to it, Mike? It aborted. Why? Because I didn't nurture it. I didn't grow it. I didn't develop it. I knew about it. I remembered it, but I didn't take care of it. I didn't grow in it. I stayed on milk, and that milk soon was not enough to take care of me, and I boarded the very thing that had so grasped me. Now, that's where many are today. We abort the thing that we grasped, that we had, that we knew, that we were convinced of, and we let it go because we didn't take care of it. We didn't grow it. We didn't develop it. We didn't seek the proper mentorship. But here was this woman. She heard of Jesus. And the Bible said she came in the press with a mindset. Now, some people come to the house of God without a mindset. They come to the house of God because that's the traditional thing to do. They come to the house of God without any idea of why they're coming, what the purpose of coming into the house of God is, what the reason for them to be in the presence of God is. So therefore, they come, they sit, they sing, they get nothing, they go home, and what happens, whatever has been birthed in them, is aborted. But the Bible said that she came with a mindset. She came with an idea. She came with, now watch it, an insight. It was an insight that some others had had but not understood. Many had come with the concept as the crowd pressed around in many different occasions. When he fed the 5,000, when he fed the 3,000, all of those the Bible said they were healed. How did they do it? The same way she did it. They simply touched his garment. So here she is as she comes, and she comes with a mindset. If I can touch him, something good will happen to me. Notice, he didn't ask for money. He didn't say, if you will give. One of my relatives one time went blind in the middle of the night. Her husband took her to a prayer meeting, and in that prayer meeting, they took her to be prayed for, and the preacher said, give me a thousand dollars right now, and I'll lay hands on her, and she'll be better in three days. He readily wrote the check, ignorance. She died as blind as she was before he took her. He didn't ask her for money. He didn't ask her for anything other than to do the thing that was in her mind, that was in her des desire, that was given to her that this is my need, and my mindset says, if I can touch you. Now, notice this. She did not come to him with a mindset that he would touch her. Huh. That's how we come to church most of the time. We come in looking for God to touch us. But what we have found out in this church is, is that when we press in and we open our spirit 
and we begin to minister to the throne of God in spirit, we touch God. It is in you touching God that great things happen. Let's watch what happened to the woman. Now, I want you to know this. Jesus laid hands on them. They were cleansed and they were healed. But something happened to this woman that shows up in verse 28. She said, for if I can but touch his clothing, I'll be made whole. Whole. Now that, that springs a thought in me, and it should spring a thought in you, because we know that Jesus Christ is the author of salvation. And salvation operates in six different ways from the cross in healing, from the tomb in preservation, from the resurrection in deliverance, from the holy place of the high priest in safety, from the soundness of his lordship that causes every knee to bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. But then it goes to a new place, a final place, where Paul said, you are complete in him. What is it that it happens? Wholeness. Wholeness. Wholeness happens in the Godhead. Wholeness happens whenever you get yourself to the Godhead. Now watch it now. The cross is a place where universal forgiveness is poured for your belief. The tomb is a place where your spirit man is preserved for you simply bear your flesh with Jesus Christ. The resurrection is the place where anointing is produced and provided for you by Christ, the anointed, resurrected, victorious one. Now the high priest comes along and by the body and the blood and the sprinkling in the tabernacle, he makes you safe. Safe and secure under the elements of the cross, the tomb, and the resurrection. Then the Lordship happens, and you realize that now you bow before Him as Lord. But the final place, the final place is the place where you, because of five works, bow come into, are seated and welcomed and a part of the heavenly congregation. Now that's what this woman was looking for. How do I know it? Because of what the Bible said. The Bible said she was looking for things that was in Jesus. Something that was on his inner makeup, not something that he would reach out and touch. But she wanted to touch him because what was in him was greater than what he could give her. How do I know it? Well, there were 10 lepers. What happened to those 10 lepers? Oh, there were 10 of them that were healed. Nine of them walked away. One of them returned. The one that returned got the greater out of what Jesus was doing for him because he got something that was in him, not something that was given from him. Think about that. Now here is this little woman. She's got an issue of blood. She's got a problem she cannot get over. She's got a problem no one can help her with. Her only idea in life is this. I've seen others be healed by him. I've seen those be healed and then not be healed anymore. I've seen that happen. Well, we've seen it too, haven't we? We've seen people stand up, get great miracles, walk out, and go back to living what they were doing, and the healing was what? Aborted. Aborted. Because they never got to the place the little woman went into. 
They never got to the wholeness of God. They never got to the Godhead. They never got to the place where the divine Godhead was speaking something to them that absolutely unconditionally brought a judgment from heaven that said the promises that are in that man are yea and amen to you. Here she is. She says, if I can but touch him, I'll be made whole. Why would she think that way? What was there about Jesus that she could look at and see? Well, the Bible said Jesus wore the robe of the priest and the borders that surrounded the bottom of his garment were made out of blue. On that garment, there were two things attached to that blue thread. There were pomegranates and there were bells. These were the pomegranates, the bells, and the blue thread of the priest. Of the high priest. Now, where would the priest go with his garment? He would enter into the throne room of God. There he would meet and tabernacle with God. So when she saw him, she saw those borders in blue. And she said, it is there. It is from that perspective that if I can touch that, I can tabernacle with God. I can touch, I can reach out and touch God. The pomegranate is a fruit that has no flesh. Only thing about it is it's full of seed. The inner part of it eaten and seeds dropped all tell us that the Word of God is springing up, springing up, springing up, springing up. Everywhere it goes, it's springing up. So as the pomegranate went around, they could readily see that the Word of God was performing and performing quickly exactly what it had promised it would do if I could just touch it. Who knows, but at the moment that he touched, she touched that bell and that garment, that the bell went off and the bell signified that what you have reached out to touch has been touched and immediately, the Bible said, it dried up on the inside of her. The word of God was performed quickly and it dried up on the inside of her and she became what? Whole. Now, that's what you're looking for today. That's what the world is looking for, and they don't know it. That's what the sinner is looking for today, and they don't know it. They're looking for the touch that will take them into the throne room of God, where in the throne room of God they can be moved by the very word of the open door of judgment that gives them the promises that are not from him, but are in him. Now watch this. And straightway a fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she had been made healed of that plague. And Jesus, now watch, immediately knowing in himself, Immediately knowing, now look at this word, that virtue had gone out of him. When I read that word, my mind began to do flip-flops. What does that word virtue mean? Why is it there? What's it all about? When I went into the Greek, do you know what it meant? It meant ability, might might. When she reached out and touched him, the Bible said that the seven spirits of God in Revelation 3 and Revelation 5 are around the throne of God. Do you remember what they do? Do you remember what they are? They are wisdom. They are understanding. They are counsel. And they are might. From the throne, now this is what's so beautiful. She reached out and touched him and reach directly in to the throne of God. Went through the high priest, reached directly into the throne room of God, and the seven spirits of God that are around the throne of God were released in her. And she was not only touched by it, 
It made her completely whole. She got to the man in the Godhead. She went where God was. And Jesus knew it and said, an ability has come out of me. It did not come from my touch. It came from my inner self. It came from the Godhead. It came from the divinity of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And now who was that? How could you get to my divinity? Why could she get there, Pastor? Because she set her mind to do that. She set her mind on what she saw. She set her mind on what she knew. She set her mind on what she had been taught. She set her mind on the high priest border. And what happened? She went into the Godhead, and there the might around the throne was released to her. The very might and ability of God to do what? Well, to heal her plague. What is that might and ability available to you for? Now, I have to tell you, you're not going to get there if you don't understand what the cross has done. She looked at him and she knew who he was. He was the Messiah. He, she was the, he was the one who was going to die for his people. She knew that there was going to be a resurrection of that Messiah. That he was going to live again. She knew that because of the clothing that he wore, he was a high priest. She knew she did this out of her faith. Jesus said so. She did this out of her ability to look in to who he was, to what she saw, and then touch what was in him. Can you touch what is inside Jesus Christ? That's the purpose of this scripture. To let you know that you can touch what is on the inside of Christ. You can access it. It belongs to you. The seven spirits of God, the Bible said, are the eyes that are going to and fro in the earth and showing themselves strong. They're here for you so that you can reach into the throne room of God. Come through the cross. Crucify your flesh. Be delivered and made the anointing in Christ Jesus. Accept his safety that comes to you as high priest. Be sound in his lordship and walk into the throne room of God where you can be whole. What does wholeness entail? It entails that you now can see. It entails that you're no longer broken. It entails that you have no bruises to present. It entails that you are now no longer captive and in bondage to the slavery of things that sin has brought upon your life. You have none of that. You are now whole. And watch what Jesus said. He said you are given a brand new year that is acceptable because it is the acceptable year of our Lord. Now Jesus comes along and says, <laughs> someone here. Now imagine this. Someone here. <laughs> Many have touched him. Many have touched him. Listen to what I'm saying. Many have touched him. Let's, let's look at it. Turned about in the press. What's that mean? Many were touching him. Many, many were reaching out to him. But then he says, who touched my clothes? Many were bumping shoulders with him. Many were going along saying, yes, I say, are you looking? This me, this Jesus. Here we go together. Many were bumping along with him. But he identified something that the little woman did. That was different than all of the rest of them. She said she touched my clothes. She rung the bell, in other words. <laughs> she took the seed out of the pomegranate. She touched the borders in blue that said, You are my high priest. 
Your blood and your body has sprinkled for me, and therefore it will be sprinkled, and I will be safe in the arms of Almighty God. I will be able to walk into the divine presence of God. Jesus said she did. How do you know, Pastor? By the word virtue. Now let's look. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude. You see the throng and say unto us, Who touched me? What are they saying? There are countless many that are trying to get to you. There are countless numbers that are trying to come by one way or another. They're trying to bump shoulders. They're trying to be sick. That's where our world is today. There are countless churches today that are having church. And they, they feel as though because they're at church, they're getting somewhere. But then there are those who are coming into the presence of the man in the Godhead bodily. There are those that are walking and living in the divine might, the divine wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord, and the judgment of God that is surrounding the throne. They walk into the very throne room of God and pull out of that throne room the exact answer and ability that God has for meeting their personal need. There are those that are doing that. There are others that are just bouncing around, bumping around, bumping beach balls up in the air, giving a social justice ministry, doing a psychological evaluation from the pulpit. But Jesus said, somebody touched the throne of grace. And he looked around about, to see. Now watch this. Watch the language. Who, her, that had done this thing. What's the language tell me? It tells me that what she done, what she had done was something no one else had done. It tells me that where she had gone was someplace no one else had gone. It tells me that what she saw that stimulated her activity brought her an answer of which no one else had got. Because she was the only one made whole. The rest were healed. The rest were cleansed. See? The rest were purged. But this little woman saw something and did something. Jesus wanted to know who, who has gone into me so that they can get to the Godhead, so that they can get into the divine side of me, not just the side of me that would touch them and cleanse them or purge them, but the divine side of me. Oh, my God, what a woman she was. Now, bear in mind, by law, she would have been stoned even for being in the crowd, but she set her mind because of something she saw. Because of something she knew, because of something she believed, she set her mind. She put her mind set and said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. All too frequently in our modern day world, we rely on things that we think, that we heard, that we have been reading about, that they can do for us, that they can give us, that they can help us with. Instead of understanding, my friend, that there is a place in him where he from the divine inner God will do for you the thing that you look at that no one else is getting, that no one else is receiving, but you're getting it because you set your mind on getting into who he is as the man in the Godhead. He said, now look, and I'm about done. He said, who has done this thing? Who has done this thing? Because this thing is different, it's greater, it's bigger, it's deeper than anything anybody else has done. Look at the scripture. But the woman now, fearing and trembling. Why was she fearing and trembling, Pastor Mike? Because she had broken the law. She had come out in her uncleanness.
and broken the law. I want to tell you today, if you're in this house today and you've got a problem, you've got something inside you that is isolating you from your world, that is making you different, that is causing you to act different, be different, think different, do different, and it has isolated you from your loved ones. It's isolated you from your friends. It's isolated you. Look at the scripture. She was fearing and trembling because of the thing they said should isolate you. You can't come around. You can't be in the crowd. But all of a sudden, here she is. All of a sudden, here you are. All of a sudden, house of God, listening to the word of God, listening to a man tell you about a person that is in the Godhead bodily and about something coming out of the throne room of God that caused Jesus Christ to look around and say, who has done this thing? Who has entered into my presence? Ah. So she fearing and trembling, knowing what was done. Look at that. Knowing what was done in her. Now here's the message the Holy Ghost gives you today. If you'll but reach out and touch the hem of his garment, the thing that is in you will be made whole. If you'll but reach out and touch the hem of his garment, the thing that you're seeking and looking for and don't understand, the thing that has boggled your mind and bruised you and broken you and made you blind, captive, and brought you in slavery and kept you there. If you will but look at the hem of his garment and realize whom you're dealing with, you, you can have a mindset to reach into the throne room of God and find wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord and the judgment of God that will make you free. Oh, oh what a word. What a word. You don't have to be in fear and trembling anymore. You don't have to be isolated anymore. You don't have to be downhearted, disgusted, discouraged, upset anymore. You don't have to be oppressed and anxious anymore. You don't have to be bound by sin anymore. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fell down before her, before him. Well, what did she say when she fell down? What did she mean when she fell down? Huh? What did she mean? She said, you're my Lord. I got something, and you're my Lord. I bow before you as the exalted Lord of glory. She bowed before him, and what did she do? She poured out the story. She told the witness of who she was, what she had done, how she had been isolated, why she had been isolated, what caused her to be isolated. And But she bowed before him and said, you are my Lord. I'm bowing before you as the exalted Lord. And now watch now, watch now, watch now, watch now. Why was that important, Pastor Mike? Well, because we can be touched by God, as we have seen in multiple evangelistic ministries, walk away from here and abort the very seed that's been planted in us. But she knew something had been done in her that required her to do something. So she bowed down and said, you're my Lord. I'm bowing before you as the exalted Messiah Lord. I'm bowing before you and telling you everything. I'm pouring out all my heart to you. Man, what a move of God this little woman had had. That move of God was a thing that Jesus said, Who hath done it? Who has brought themselves to get to that point with me? So she bowed. Now watch what Jesus said. And he said unto her, Daughter, 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 Why would he call her a daughter? Well, she was a Jew, Pastor. Mm -mm. Because she had come into the divine inheritance of the knowledge of the truth. He, she had bowed before him 
And he had said, you now are a child of the living God. I decree it. He said, daughter, thy faith, thy faith, thy faith, what you had believed about what you saw in the bush and the pomegranate and the bell, what you had believed about what was in me, what was in me, the divine Godhead operating in me, what you had believed hath made you whole. Whole. That means that it made her complete. Now watch what it did. Now watch what it did. Watch it now. First of all, it set her mind. What she believed set her mind. Second of all, what she believed brought her a knowledge of who he was and what he would do. Thirdly, what she did was reach into him, into the Godhead part of him. Then her faith caused her to bow before him and make him Lord. Without lordship, my friend, you will never bring the thing that you're being healed of. Without His Lordship, you will never bring the thing that you're about to be healed from under control. Without His... Now listen what I'm saying. The cross will not bring it under control. The cross will forgive you and the cross will heal you in your spiritual walk. The tomb, the preservation of your inner man and the death of your flesh will not bring it into control. It will help solve the battle. The resurrection and the anointing will not solve the issue. Being safe in the knowledge of your salvation will not, it will only come when you get sound under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because from the Lordship of Jesus Christ, your access into the Godhead, your access into the man, your access into the throne room of God, from that perspective, because you have exalted him to the same measure that God has exalted him. So the little woman bows. She begins to tell her story. And Jesus said, daughter, adopted daughter, child of the living God, heir of the throne of God with me. Thy faith, what you have believed, has done something for you that it has not done for anybody else because no one else has gone where you've gone. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Then he says words to her. Go in peace. You're whole now. You have made me Lord. You have believed. You have touched what's on the inside of me. You have been in the throne room of God. You have made me Lord. Go in peace. And be whole. Go in peace. And behold, that's what I'd like to tell you today. There is a move into the bigger blessing for you if you will understand what I preach today. I don't care who you are. I don't care what's encompassing your life. Now, I, I, say, I, I, I need to find a better way to put that. I cannot say this in enough strong terms. It makes no difference who you are. It makes no difference what is holding you in bondage. It makes no difference what your tradition is. It makes no difference what your foundation is in the in church work, in church attendance, or in denomination. It makes no difference there. What makes a difference is, is can you hear the Word of God, see what this woman did, and then follow suit with it by the distribution of your faith in what Jesus Christ has spoken to her. Come under His Lordship and be made whole. Whatever it is, is simply waiting for you. To press in. Bow your head and close your eyes. Now Father I preach truth. There are those. That today. Need a miracle in their life. They've been isolated. Ostracized. Pushed out. They have been separated. From those they love. From those that. 
or friends, they've been put in a position where they have isolated and been isolated. But today, God, I have told them that they can reach out and touch your inner self. That they can touch the Godhead today. I preach truth to them about being whole. Now God, I ask the Holy Spirit to stimulate their heart today. To convince them that they have the opportunity and the right to go beyond being saved and walk into the throne room of God and take out of there the promises of God. That those promises of God being yea and amen. Those promises of God being yea and amen are as given to them as they were to this little woman. Whether it is a back problem, a knee problem, a heart problem, a mind problem, physical rebellion of any kind, mental, emotional, whatever it is, God, in the throne room where the Godhead is, all resides all of the things that come out of the seven spirits of God to solve our need. Now, Father, I pray that you'll open their heart to accept it. And as I give them the opportunity to do so, may they respond and praise you for the answer. In the lovely name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Now, now, you have the moment. This is personal to you. You have the moment to press in right now. You stand at the crossroads of whether you're going to make a move and a response to the message that's been spoken or not. Whether you are going to say, today is my day and set my sights on that border in blue. Reach out and touch that pomegranate and hear that bell ring on your behalf. You have that right today. It is individual to you. It belongs to you. Jesus paid for you to have it. Whether it's healing in your body, healing in your mind, healing in your emotions, healing in your actions, Jesus paid for you to have it. And this is your day because you have heard the Word of God. And you have heard the Word of God that brings truth, that brings truth that you can be free of your plague, whatever your plague is. What I want you to do is stand to your feet. I want you to lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive it. I receive freedom today. I receive peace. I receive deliverance. I receive it today. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. My discouragement, my loss is no more. My bondage is no more. My sickness is no more. I'm released. The power of God has spoken and said, Who has reached in me and done this thing? It is me, God. It is I. I have done it. I have come in fear and trembling. And now I want to tell you my story of how I have been brought out of a mighty bad life into the newness of hope, and my faith has made me whole. Oh, what a God. Lift your hands and take it. Father, I take it today. I receive it today. I receive deliverance today. I walk in the newness of my faith. My faith is in Jesus Christ. It's not in me. I enter into the throne room of God boldly. And there I find grace and mercy. And there grace and mercy has spoken to me and given me help in my moment of need. It's mine. It's mine. I take it. 
It's been revealed to me. I receive it. Now I release it out of my mouth. I am well. I am whole. I am free. I am out of bondage. I am out of sin. I am out of slavery. I am free today. Oh, yes, I am. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> <laughs> the devil thought he had me, but I got away. Glory to God. The devil thought he had me isolated, but I got free. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, I'm free. Yes, I am. It's yours. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. Jesus made a way to make you whole. I want to talk to those of you on the video. Wherever you are in what circumstances you may be, no matter what they appear to be difficult, you will never find a more difficult one than this little lady I preached to you about today. But yet out of her difficulty, she set her eyes to touch the inner thing, the virtue, the seven spirits of God. And out of those seven spirits of God came healing. And that healing was not just for a moment. It was lasting. It made her completely whole. You can live there today. You can be there today. You can walk there today. All you have to do is bow yourself and make Him Lord. Bow yourself. Set your mind like a flint to touch into His heart. Receive healing today. And then bow and make Him Lord. Then you can tell him all of your story. And he'll look at you and say, Son, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. And be whole. Be whole of the thing that besets you. Be whole of the thing that isolates you. Because they don't isolate you anymore. There's a new year. A new day has dawned. And it has happened right in Receive it today. Father, I receive the Word of God. I take it today. If I'm lost, I want to be saved. Forgive me of my sins. If I'm saved, but I've never made you Lord, I want to make you Lord. M allow me to make you my Lord. I want to reach into the throne room of God, see the man in the Godhead bodily, and get in the bigger movement. Get into the bigger things of God because they belong to me. I can be whole. I thank you for it all in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, our high priest, our Lord, and our man in the Godhead. Now, I want to say to those of you that are on video, find a man that's preaching the Word of God. If you cannot find a man that's preaching the Word of God, keep looking. But every time that we are on Facebook, YouTube, Lift Him Higher Radio, or Mike Springston FFC Podcast, come into our teaching. Because we're going to tell you the truth about what Jesus Christ has done for you through His names, through the plan of salvation, and through faith. Come and visit with us. We love you. We appreciate you. We care for you. Now those of you that are in our hearing today, before we dismiss, I want to tell you that walking out of here, the key element is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If you will make Him Lord and bow yourself, you can use His Lordship to cause whatever has buffeted you, come against you, caused you to be bruised, broken, lost your sight, caused you to be held captive. You can take any of that and lay it down at the feet of Jesus Christ. Laying it down there, here it is, Lord. Call it my name. Call it my name, whatever it may be. Call it my knee. I bring my knee and bow. You're Lord over my knee. Knee, you know that He is Lord over you. Back, shoulder, kidney, whatever. You know who your Lord is. And you have to bow. And that Lordship, His Lordship, will continue to be your means and method of escape as you enter into the throne room of God boldly. Father, Bless your people. Free them. Let their faith be released to free them. 
and give us peace. Keep us until we meet again. In the lovely name of Jesus Christ, our high priest, our Lord, and our man in our head. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week tonight.